iFaro's uh, focus here at IBC? iFaro offers video content identification solutions. To kind of put it in simple terms, go something like this. There is a general set of challenges that the media industry is facing right now, and across the board all media players are facing this. Primarily, there is a loss of control of content. Why? Because there's more content and more distribution platforms out there. And so technologies and solutions are needed that enable this content to be identified, controlled, and ultimately monetized along any point of the media asset lifecycle. And that's what iFaro offers. Okay, so the, the, the platform itself, what the does that consist of? It's called the media, iFaro Media Secret Core Platform. And what that is, is it a workflow agnostic content identification platform. It's based on what's called the video fingerprinting technology. A video fingerprint is essentially a small signature file that represents all of the unique optical characteristics of a video or a piece of media. This small file can be stored, is created from any piece of media, it's stored, and can then be used to subsequently identify that piece of media when it appears in any video source or any source. I'll give you an example. Our first generation product, the first generation product that we, I guess we originally released this three and a half years ago, or three years ago or so. This was called, this was just a product for pure commercial monitor. Now it's called the AdMon software system that enables customers to identify whenever advertisements appear on TV. You can basically take any advertisement, create a small fingerprint for it, yep. store that fingerprint, get rid of the original advertisement, you don't need to store it anymore, and then identify whenever that advertisement appears on TV by, quote, watching the TV using our software. Okay. So extend that. You can then apply this to archives. You can apply this to someone who's, who's, who's doing a piece of work who's in post-production. Someone who's doing work on a particular file can basically take that file and say, I don't know what it is, I want to check it against the database, they can do that. Or you can check TV, you can check the internet, etc. So, so what are some of these identifiers that make up a fingerprint? I mean, what, what are the optical characteristics? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a secret sauce in a way, right? I mean, right. That's, that's basically where, that, that's what sets us apart from our competitors. But it, does it, um, do these characteristics relate to uh, the, what the, the production, the acquisition? Is it, is it, is it color balance? Is Good it question. lighting? Is it's, it? it's based on, let's call it color characteristics okay. and how they change over time. What's very interesting about that and about fingerprinting in general is because it's based on optical characteristics, the system or any our fingerprinting technique is format agnostic, meaning if I were to take one format of a, of a certain piece of media and another format of the same piece of media and compare them, if they're the same piece of media, they should have roughly identical fingerprints. Mm. Of course, there could be slight changes due to artifacts, yep. due to the particular yep. format used, but they would identify it. And that's a real unique characteristic of our type of video fingerprinting. Okay. So so that that in that way you're able to it's it's multi platform monitoring. Multi platform monitoring. Let's let's take a specific example. I mean that's always the best way to do it. Let's for example say that you are what should we start with? You're broad you you produce broadcast news, right? And so what you're essentially doing is you're getting 100 to 200 hours of licensed content every day, right? With metadata. Yeah. Then what you're doing is you're putting that in an archive somewhere, right? Then what you're doing is you're taking that, or maybe you're cutting it up and you're putting together the nightly news. What happens? You wind up with a nightly news program and you've lost all your meta information. Why? Because you started out with the small clips and you had meta information for the small clips, then you combined it, you rearranged it, you've lost all the meta information, right? Now, at any point along that process, I can take any piece of video, any piece of media, I can essentially fingerprint it, I can compare to the source material, if it's also been fingerprinted, when it comes in, and I can basically match them again and know exactly what I've been looking at, right? Or I can do that once it's been broadcast on TV. I can say, for, for player purposes, I can say, what's been broadcast when? I mean, a lot of broadcasters don't know actually when they're playing out their own stuff. Right? So you can essentially take any piece of content after it's been broadcast, compare it against the original fingerprints in the archive, and identify exactly what it is and what the rights are. Right? And you have to imagine that at no point along that process, or, or chances are, at multiple points along this process, from acquisition
acquisition of content to distribution of those content. There could be multiple formats used. Okay. Is there, is there an, uh, a, uh, an enforcement or a forensic um, application for this? So, Of course. So there is an inf uh, a for enforcement or forensic application. It, it really depends on what the focus of the company is. And I'll give an example. What a lot of our competitors are doing is they have services where they basically take content from the studios and they search internet or web properties for that content. And that's certainly an enforcement issue, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, our approach is the same and yet slightly different. We offer a product. And what we say is, and this will come back to your original question, by the way, I'm just wondering. What we essentially say is customers want to not only be able to identify content once it appears out there, but internally they want to be able to identify it as well. So whereas our competitor is basically looking at that second half of the BS lifecycle post-distribution, we're saying, well, you're also going to need fingerprinting internally, mm. right? So why is that relevant? Because you basically have two points where compliance becomes relevant, or two kind of in both halves. The first half is how am I on time, by the way? Wrap it up? Or, yeah. Okay. The first half is essentially the rights information associated with anything that goes out. Yep. The second half is once it's out, making sure it's not showing up where it should. Okay. So essentially, uh, you're you're really taking on uh, traditional uh, monitoring and logging operations on one side, and but also. That's exactly right. superseding the watermarking That's exactly technology right. on the other side. What we're essentially saying is that the fingerprint has unique value that once it's created, it can be used at any point along the media asset lifecycle for any of the same content regardless of whether or not that content has been altered. That's the problem with the watermark. The watermark and you get, if, if you don't, you have an old copy of what's an, what's an old movie, let's say E.T. Yeah. If it's not watermarked and it shows up somewhere, you're not going to find it. No. If it's fingerprinted, you can always find it, regardless of what version or when that version was created. So we are essentially, in a way, offering the ability for content owners, again, to take it back, to know where their content is, to know where it's been used, and to know how it's been used. Yeah. And there's no, there's no uh, inserting it. Anything into the There's file no or the transmissions yeah, stream whatsoever. or anything? None whatsoever. Nice. This will, if you look, at, I can assure you, if you look down three to five years, fingerprinting technologies, fingerprinting solutions, high pharaohs, we believe, will be at every point along the asset life cycle. Mm -hmm. All right, very quick question. <laughs> um, other uh, industry verticals, such as uh, security, like Homeland Security, is there, is there a, an application there? Or? Not really, because what you have to keep in mind about the fingerprint is it's identifying the actual original video that you started with. It's not identifying characteristics. It doesn't know, for example, if there's a man or a boy or a yeah, tree or okay. dog. Yeah. What it's doing is it's identifying that exact kind of frame or smaller subsections of that frame. Yeah. Right, that's important to keep in mind. So for security point of view, it's not it's not semantic. It doesn't understand what's there. Mm -hmm. right. But but one more thing. On the government side, certainly, there is a need to be able to identify when particular pieces of content show up. For example, if there's a, a terror threatening terrorist video, where does that show up on what channels at what point at, at what point at, at what place in the planet? Right? Is there uh, in sorry, very last question. Is is there a way then of, let's say some bad guys produce a video and they're ranting and raving and so on. Um, obviously that that footage is going to have some characteristics. Is there any way uh, in your secret source of um, using that to identify uh, perhaps where, when, what they used? Different technologies. That's okay. a different technology. All right. That's it. I mean, ultimately, we could move in that direction, but as of right now, there's so much need for what I've already described yeah, yeah, that yeah. it's it's kind of a separate kind of a separate strategic direction. Okay. So, uh, 
very last question. Shoot. Just getting back to the ad, the ad, say, the ad monitoring example. Okay. Um, so it's it's fingerprinted. It has its own characteristics. Then uh, when that pops up, uh, what what's the process on the, the feedback there? Really simple. What happens is this: you fingerprint what you're looking for, right? The system can also suggest new advertisements, and you say, is this a new advertisement? Yeah, a user can do this. Yes, it's a new one. Then what happens is every single channel is essentially fingerprinted as well. In, in, in fast, actually, it's faster than real time, but that doesn't matter. And what happens is the fingerprints from the TV channels are compared against a reference database, and when we find a match, we know what commercial has been aired. And that data can, you know, the data can be returned in any format, XML, when, where, video, etc.